because I'm the Miz and I'm awesome! What's going on everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your 2012 Night of Champions review. Guys, I had a lot of fun with this show. Uh, not everything was perfect. Uh, I really hope people aren't downrating this show like they did SummerSlam, which was also great, but this was a phenomenal show. Not a lot of filler, not a lot of totally dragon stuff. A couple things I disagree with, most of which you would already probably know. If you listen to my preview to this pay-per-view, on the uh, on the Wrestling Paradise channel, but it is what it is. We got what we got. Uh, a couple things changed along the way, but it was a fun show. It was a good show. There was a lot of things. A lot of the right people won. I'll put it that way. Um, start off with the pre-show. We had an interview with Booker T, who says he hasn't made his decision about the brogue kick and the whole Sheamus bullshit and all that. We have a video package for Antonio Cesaro, who's the new U.S. champion, because we're about to have the Battle Royal to. Uh, to establish the new, uh, I can speak, I swear, I'm tired, it's almost midnight here, to establish the new number one contender for the U.S. Championship. The 16 people in this match were Brodus Clay, Epico and Primo, who brought back Rosa, nice to see Rosa again, Gabriel Tensai, Kid, Michael McGillicuddy, Zack Ryder, uh, Titus O'Neil and Darren Young, Jinder Mahal, JTG, Drew McIntyre, Ted DiBiase Jr., Heath Slater, and Santino Morella. Thank God the winner was not uh, Santino Morella, and it should be noted that the entire 15 other guys in the Battle Royal ganged up to get rid of Heath Slater. So maybe Heath Slater is a, a really big superstar. We just don't know it yet. Um, the only two things really to note here was uh, Tensai powerbombing Kid out of the ring, which was a nice little spot, and the brief battle of the big guys between Brodus Clay and Tensai. Other than that, got down to the final four, which I believe was the primetime players, Tensai and uh, Zack Ryder. And given that those were your final four, I'm glad to say that Zack Ryder was your winner. We start off the show with Michael Cole updating us on Jerry Lawler. Lawler's doing great. He's well enough to travel. He's going from Montreal to Memphis sometime this week. They also announced that JBL is going to be joining Michael Cole on commentary. Fantastic. Michael Cole and JBL on commentary tonight did... Fantastic. I'll just say it right off the bat. We started off with the match that I was the one of the matches that I was the most worried about, the fatal four-way between the the Miz, Rey Mysterio, Sin Cara, and Cody Rhodes for the Intercontinental Championship. Um there was a lot of dynamic stuff in this match that was really cool because we saw we saw the two separate feuds that are going. We saw Miz versus Rey, we saw Sin Cara versus Cody Rhodes. We saw Rey Mysterio versus Rhodes because they've had their problems as well. We saw Miz hook it up with Sin Cara a little bit. We saw the Luchadors finally go at it, which was great. And we saw the Miz versus Cody Rhodes, which is what I want to see in the future a lot as well. Nice Tower of Doom powerbomb suplex by the Miz on Rhodes and Rey. Sin Cara hit a nice suicide dive on the Miz on the outside at one point. Rey head scissored Rhodes into the rails, which was a nice looking spot. Cody continued his story of going for the masks, etc. Sin Cara, for some reason, didn't put a mask on Cody Rhodes, put a mask on the Miz instead, which makes a lot of sense. But the Miz blindly hits a skull crushing finale on Cody Rhodes and picks up the victory. Now, am I happy? because my guy won? Absolutely. Am I happy because my buddy Preston has been telling me as a Miz, as a Miz fan and telling the Miz to go fuck himself for about a week now? Kind of, yeah, but I say that in jest. Why I'm happy about this? Because I'm a Miz fan. Because let's look at the facts. Let's look at the cold hard facts of this result. Not only did the Miz win a match that contained a former world champion in Rey Mysterio, also a very huge fan favorite and one of the Super Family, also beat Cody Rhodes, second generation superstar, and he's had his own um, times to have championships and be decorated in that right as well. And you've got Sin Cara, who no, not a, a lot of people are high on, but you know WWE is trying to push. He beat all three of them. Now... That would be enough, but he beat all three of them blindfolded. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Miz retains the Intercontinental Championship, and we are off to a hell of a start. 
We see primetime players trying to get a tag team title shot from Eve in the back, but Eve is interrupted by EMTs who tell them that Caitlyn's had an accident. Caitlyn's been attacked. She can't perform tonight. Big surprise. Da 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 da. Next match is Brian and Kane versus R. Boom. R. Boom double team Kane for a while. Brian tags in and he's yelling at Kane while he's beating on R. Truth. And then R. Boom double team Brian for a while. So that's fun too. Uh, Brian kicks the hell out of Truth, is Truth's chest for a long time. Kane uses Brian as a weapon on one of the members of our room and fails. And they're about to go at it when the, the crowd starts chanting, Hug it out. And they actually do. And when they show the close up of Kane, Kane's nose is actually bloody. At first, I thought it was, you know, the makeup from underneath the mask or whatever. But it looked as if Kane had done something bad to his nose, either cut it or got a bloody nose or whatever. Uh, Kofi hits a boom drop on Brian. Kofi hits an over the top rope somersault to the outside on both of them. Uh, Brian back in the ring locks in the no lock on Kofi Kingston. Kane beats down Truth on the outside. Brian throws Kane off the top rope because they've been arguing some more. Kane happens to land on Kofi Kingston, and that's how Brian and Kane become your new tag team champions. So, yes, the tag team titles, the titles that are supposed to be designated for tag teams, went from one set of singles guys to another set of singles guys. And if my predictions are correct, it's going to go to another set of singles guys in the near future. Uh, the match was fantastic, as I knew it would be. My problems with it being that it was for the titles, and that's, you know... Another discussion for another time. It was entertaining. It was a good match. It was more, actually, than I expected from our boom, which is good. I mean, you expect great things from Daniel Bryan and Kane because they are the big, you know, the big-time superstars that they are and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, our boom looked great in this match, even in defeat. And, uh, yeah, we know where the belts are going next. So let's just, yeah. Uh, Teddy Long, Booker T, and Eve are all talking in the back. They're talking about the fact that uh, Caitlyn can't compete. Booker T names Eve as the new number one contender because Eve's been kissing his ass ever since she became part of his administration. Like, we didn't see this one coming. Antonio Cesaro versus Zack Ryder, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on. Basically, Ryder got owned for a couple of minutes and Cesaro retained his title. Glorified squash. Nice to see Ryder on uh, on pay-per-view again. He got a fucking huge reaction, both in the pre-show Battle Royal and when he came out for this match. So maybe, maybe that means something for him in the future. Like, I don't know. Team him back up with Hawkins and revamp the tag team division. Just saying. One of the matches of the night. Ziggler versus Orton. They both start off pretty light, actually, you know, a couple strikes and a couple misses and a couple strikes and a couple misses, looking very, very even at the very beginning. Um, they have a really, really tight coll collar and elbow tie-up, and right from the beginning, the crowd is chanting loudly and proudly, Ziggler's better. Uh, Ziggler grounds Orton and works over his head and neck. Orton gets a slingshot suplex on Ziggler. Ziggler blocks the suspension DDT and tries for a roll-up. Uh, the second rope missile drop kick by Ziggler and we start getting a let's go Randy, let's go Ziggler chant. Like I say again, very, very loud. Ziggler puts down a whole shower of elbows on Orton while he's down. Ziggler hits up the sleeper and uh, does that thing that he does when he locks in the sleeper and then he floats over into an arch. Looks very, very nice. Um, lost my place. Uh, great standing dropkick by Orton and Ziggler hits a DDT and gets a near fall. Top rope superplex by Orton and then they start trading strikes. And this is... Usually when they go from actually wrestling each other to, you know, just punching it out, it's not exactly the most exciting part of the match, but this was, like, this was prolonged for about two minutes, you know, between kicks and strikes and elbow shots and headbutts and, and kicks to the gut, etc. Um, the trading strikes uh, component of this match was fantastic. Uh, Ziggler hits a famous sir and gets a near fall. Let's go Ziggler is louder and louder and louder as the match goes on. He avoids the suspension DDT again. They brawl outside. Ziggler eats the guardrail hard on the outside. Suspension DDT from the guardrail to the floor. Uh, they get back into the ring. A failed RKO is countered into a sleeper, which is countered into a successful RKO, and Orton gets the win. Now, everybody else I know, and you guys, we just finished this conversation like two minutes ago, not happy with the fact that Orton got the win here. I'm happy with how good Ziggler looked in this match, and I'm happy with the no with the 95% knowledge that we could possibly see these guys next month in a Hell in the Cell match. And... If this is what we need to get to these two great athletes and competitors and whatever in a Hell in the Cell match, I will gladly take it with a side of fries. Moving on. Layla versus Caitlyn. 
uh, which has been changed to Layla versus Eve, so I don't know why I wrote that. Eve rides a headlock in the early going for a long time. Great counter wrestling by both women for several minutes until Eve chucks Layla outside and then tosses Layla ribs first into the apron. Eve, for the next little while, works over her midsection. Great psychology, great uh, in-ring storytelling, etc. Eve locks in a body scissors on the midsection and then adjusts herself to lock in a body scissors around Layla's head. Uh, Layla eventually gets out, hits a DDT. Eve misses the crossbody. Eve cracks off a quick-looking neckbreaker, and Eve is your new Divas Champion. So she's running Booker T's administration, and she's the Divas Champion. Go, Eve. Glad to see her with a belt around her waist. Moving on. Um, we go to the back where Brian and Kane... This is... This is... <sighs> This is the kind of thing where I can either say it's ridiculous or I can enjoy it because it's funny. I will make that decision based on the day. Daniel Bryan and Kane arguing in the back, uh, each one of them saying, I am the tag team champions. I am the tag team champions. First of all, not proper English. Second of all, it's just lame and it makes them sound like two-year-olds that are squabbling over a basketball in the schoolyard. But AJ comes in, freaks out, talks about how she spent all this money and all this time to bring Dr. Shelby in to help them out and how they've made so many strides and how they're champions and they still can't get along and whatever. Daniel Bryan congratulates uh, Kane. Kane disappears. Kane comes back and dumps a big, massive vat of Gatorade over everybody. AJ's in a wet white t-shirt. I'm happy. This segment is therefore forgiven. Uh, moving on, they're the champions. I could care less, really. Really, tag team wrestling is dead. Moving on. We have Sheamus come out and we have Alberto Del Rio come out for the World Heavyweight Championship match. Booker T comes out to announce that he has decided not to ban the Brogue kick. Um, oh, I'm tired, guys. I really, really am. Alberto Del Rio starts off the match with striking with speed, basically showing how much faster he is than Sheamus and making Sheamus look like a bit of a goofball. Sheamus uh, bowls Brian into the corner and starts brawling him. Sheamus hits the battering ram off the apron to the outside, which I will admit was a great looking move. Alberto Del Rio launches Sheamus from the steps to the Spanish announce table. Nice looking spot. Alberto Del Rio works over the arm, works over the shoulder. Alberto Del Rio steps on the back of Sheamus' neck which was a nice looking spot. Um, Sheamus eats ring post to the shoulder, Alberto Del Rio locks in the armbar, then moves Sheamus to the outside of the ring and grapevines Sheamus' arm with his entire body weight on Sheamus' arm hung over the rope. Another very, very nice looking spot. Kind of reminiscent of, I don't remember whether it was on Raw or SmackDown, but when he grapevined uh, Sheamus' arm over the edge of the stageway. Similar to that, except over a, uh, over a ring rope. Nice little spot. The psychology from Alberto Del Rio's end of this match was fantastic. Alberto Del Rio is out on the apron and uh, Sheamus makes him meet the post. Alberto Del Rio counters White Noise into a backstabber. Loud, 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 we want Ziggler chance. So yes, Boston really, really was into Ziggler tonight. It's awesome. White noise on Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio ducks the bro kick and hits an insiguri and gets a near fall on Sheamus. Alberto Del Rio ducks another kick and locks in the arm breaker, which gets countered into the clover leaf because Sheamus is the uh, the Irish Superman. Sheamus' arm is hung over the ropes. Uh, sorry, hung up in the ropes. It's twisted. He's hanging like, oh, look at me, look at how helpless I am. Da 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 da. While Alberto Del Rio kicks the hell out of his arm, brings him back into the ring, hits the code breaker on his arm, hits the cross arm breaker once again, and enter the bullshit. Sheamus, with his injured arm that's been worked over the whole match, slams Alberto Del Rio to get out of the arm breaker. Yeah. Anyways, cross arm breaker once again. Sheamus manages to break. Uh, Alberto Del Rio gets frustrated, walks into a broke kick, and Sheamus retains his title because, as Alex would say, it's in the book. Cena Punk, why are you beeping at me? I'm doing a video. Moving on. Um, I didn't write any notes for this match, honestly. I wrote down a couple points that I wanted to talk about, mostly mostly to do with the crowd. But this match was phenomenal, honestly. And as much flack as I give Cena because he doesn't sell and he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. And that's true. I mean, let's face it. It is, it is fully true. Um, but because of the hatred that people have for Cena, even in his hometown, which I love... Um, we're all invested in CM Punk, whether we're invested in him because he's a heel and we like heels, whether we are invested in him despite the fact that he's a heel, or whether we're just invested in him because we know he's the better wrestler and he's the one that deserves to be the champion. It's all good. Heyman does an intro uh, talking about himself, talking about CM Punk, but not really telling us anything, pissing off the crowd. Awesome. Uh, we have loud CM Punk chants, even though we're in Cena's hometown, before either of them are even at the ring. 
Um, throughout the match, you got the You Can't Wrestle chance. Even after John Cena had his wonky attempt at a suicide dive, people chanting, You still suck. Um, Punk used the cross, Punk pulled out the crossface, the crippler crossface of Chris Benoit on Cena tonight. Uh, there was a big, huge crowd pop from Cena's hometown crowd when CM Punk kicked out of the Attitude Adjustment. Punk hit a moonsault. Punk hit the savage uh, elbow like he typically does. Punk hit the rock bottom. Oh, yes. Um, I don't know. We, we had finisher, finisher, finisher. There was a lot of great wrestling in this match. I didn't write it down because I was too into the match. There was a lot of great wrestling in this match, but a bunch of the pop spots, like I said, was Punk hitting the moonsault, which we've never seen before. Punk hitting the rock bottom, which was fan-freaking-tastic. Um, Punk hitting the cross face, uh, all those types of things. What ended up happening, and what was supposed to end the match, was Cena taking Punk to the second rope for a German suplex with a bridge. And that being the pin that got the win. And Cena's hometown crowd, you know, goes all on fire because Cena's won the championship. And we're all like, oh, get out the hashtag, same old shit. But no, we go back and we replay and we see that both sets of shoulders were on the mat. And it's a draw. And in a draw, the champion retains the title. Oh, oh, yes. CM Punk is still your champion. John Cena can suck it because it's his own fault as uh as my friends just pointed out to me in conversation, it is definitely his own fault. If you're going to pop off a uh, a bridging German suplex, you need to make sure that your own shoulders are not on the mat. So, pretty much guaranteed that these guys are going to fight in Hell in the Cell. Pretty much guaranteed that these guys are going to fight again in a Hell in the Cell match, because that's what the next pay-per-view is. But, keep Cena in the picture, it keeps... Or, sorry, yes, keeps keep John Cena in the picture with CM Punk, it'll keep CM Punk in the main event. That's fine. Like I've said, um, for what I want to happen, and that what I want being CM Punk versus The Rock in the main event of WrestleMania, CM Punk needs to lose the belt at some point. I understand that. I understand a lot of people don't agree with me on that. But, this, this was a good match. It was a good match, and normally I wouldn't like a draw ending. Everybody's like, you know, saying to me, and I can picture you all out there right now, you know, Spaz, how can you be happy with a draw? Because a draw sticks it to John Cena. A draw sticks it to John Cena in his hometown, which goes right along with the attitude of CM Punk and Paul Heyman currently. This was a fantastic way to end the show. Everybody's pissed off. Because the, the Punk fans would have wanted Punk to win clean. The Cena fans would have wanted Cena to walk out the champion. Nobody's the, nobody wins. Everybody's pissed off. And Punk, being a heel, is going to revel in that tomorrow night on Raw. Anyways, this was a fantastic show, guys. I know everybody's not going to agree. Pop your thoughts down in the box below. But until then, I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep this conversation. Tell me what you thought of Night of Champions 2012. Don't be a stranger, I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys.